afternoon. <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me. Yes, so as you mentioned, VAST is a space station uh, builder and future operator uh, based in California in, in Long Beach. Um, and so our number one goal, long-term goal, is to build a space habitat with artificial gravity, but that will take maybe a decade or two. And so our number one goal this decade is to uh, win the biggest opportunity in uh, space station uh, land in the world, which is to have NASA as an anchor customer and have the privilege to uh, build the replacement and the successor to the ISS. Um, and so for our strategy at VAST is that uh, in order to win this competition that NASA uh, uh, called a CLD, commercial layer destination, uh, they plan to award it in mid-2026. And so as a company, we decided the best chance for us to win and make sure there is no gap in the United States uh, space station capability and all of our partner would be to actually build a space station to launch it on orbit uh, in the second half of next year and then to have a, a crew of four visit it on a SpaceX Dragon, dock, open the hatch, spend two weeks on that space station and, and come back uh, to Earth uh, safely. And so our core thesis and our belief is that if we achieve all of this before uh, NASA and the U.S. government is to pick their partner in mid-2026, uh, we will be uh, the, no, the, the world's first commercial space station company, and, uh, and we believe we'll be a safe choice uh, to, to select. Now, in terms of, uh, back to your question on the gap, um, we absolutely believe that you know we cannot have a gap. Um, the ISS is due to be retired in 2030. It is costing more and more money. It is aging. It is technical risk. Um, and I think it's very important that it is not extended. Um, but it's also important that there is no gap. Um, you know, the gap is not only letting China win or, or adversary. Is is uh, the ISS is a tool of soft power, and we have uh, connection to all of our partners, especially JAXA, ESA, and, and Canada. And if we have a gap, um, you know, it might be natural for them to start working uh, with the only other platform in lower orbit in China. And so now you have these countries having activities with that, you have research happening there, and all these connections occurring. So it's critical that we don't have a gap. Our approach to that is to um, offer to NASA an evolution um, strategy. And we are very confident that if we win in mid-2026, we will be able to have a first capability, not a replacement to the ISS, that will take longer, but a first crew capability, a first NASA certified space station uh, in 2028. And so, back to your point, we don't need a gap, we actually need an overlap to be safe in case there are delay or in case there are problems on the ISS earlier. So the first space station we're building is called uh, Haven 1, as I mentioned. Um, and for us, it's a demonstration, but a crew, it's a real space station that will be on orbit for three years. Um, but its sole purpose is actually to build confidence uh, with NASA and, and also to turn us as a company into a, an actual space station company. You know, we have competitors out there. None of us are space station companies. Uh, we are aspiring commercial space station companies. So the, the purpose is to impress NASA, and the other purpose is to become a space station company before we, we win that, uh, hopefully win that, that award. Uh, in terms of the crew based on that, our number one um, ideal crew would be one that impressed NASA. Uh, it cannot be NASA because even one is not NASA certified, 
uh, the foreign international professional astronaut uh, is definitely our number one goal uh, to lead the first expedition. And, you know, maybe a self-funded individual, we don't like the word space tourism, but self-funded individual that is, um, you know, furthering the state of, uh, of space exploration. Among it might be really good to, um, to show that we can commercialize. And that's a really important thing. NASA doesn't want to be owning the space station or paying 100% of it or bailing out the company. So confidence that it can be, that company can generate more revenue from other sources is critical uh, there. So if you look at what the ISS is, you know, the ISS is a research platform both for humans, the crew going there, finding out what happens to their body uh, in informed future space exploration, technologies as well, you know, we need uh, life support technologies and so on, and we are developing the ones on the ISS that will help us uh, on the way to, to Mars via the moon. Um, and then there's the other side, which is uh, research in, in material, in pharmaceutical, make, you know, making pharmaceutical in, in microgravity can actually result in either new drugs or better drugs. Um, you know, uh, semiconductor, there's many opportunities in fiber optics. So right now we have the stage on the ISS that this is all early research. It's not yet uh, fully commercial. It's certainly not high velocity. So between where we are now to a place where we have at scale manufacturing in space, which is in microgravity, which is the biggest opportunity, uh, we need higher velocity of iteration. And so the, the ISS is amazing, but as a researcher or as a pharmaceutical company, it might take you two or three years to even fly a payload. And so the, the hope of commercial space station is both that NASA will be replacing the ISS, will be uh, spending less money because they do not own it, but it, it's also that we will be able to operate at a commercial speed and unlock that, that opportunity. So for us, we see the, the biggest, uh, biggest opportunity but the highest risk, meaning there's a lot of steps to get there, is at scale in space manufacturing. Uh, shorter term, the market includes um, flying sovereign astronauts from nations that either have never flown to space uh, and, and want to fly to space to explore these opportunities or ones that are not flying uh, often. There's the private people and then there's, you know, uh, you mentioned entertainment, uh, sponsorship and, and obviously the whole manufacturing side or is the, the kind of um, the full umbrella of the, of the potential market there. So, you know, if you look at it from the, the interest of our country, uh, I would like and I hope that there would be two space station uh, so that there's redundancy and that uh, we have more chance uh, at performance. The reality of the budget uh, in terms of the, the, the NASA procurement uh, is probably one, and we will see. I think that's still under discussion. Um, you know, I, I think the, the reason why space station companies have been created in the last few years is, is clearly the, the future in space manufacturing opportunity. It's also the, the plummeting launch cost of people and, um, and not yet of people, but soon the Starship, when Starship will be operational and of launching NASA and space station module, um, and the opportunity to replace the ISS as an anchor customer. So uh, all of that is what creates this, uh, you know, competitive uh, market. Um, you know, we know for sure there's space for one commercial space station in the United States. Um, uh, it's not sure there's space for two, and, and we will see, and it depends on how quickly we can unlock these other commercialization uh, opportunities versus in, you know, the governmental revenue and some private people there. Well, you know, we are chasing obviously a commercial market that, that which is not a costless market, right? It's a, it's a market where we will be selling to NASA a price per day on our station, a price per payload, 
um, and we will get a lot of other uh, customers. And so, as you mentioned, the best uh, case study in that uh, commercial, you know, turning from government-owned to commercialization is a, is a commercial crew program of NASA that, that created the Dragon uh, spacecraft. Um, working with SpaceX, you know, on flying future customer on Haven 1 with Dragon is, is very commercially friendly. We, you know, we can probably fly, we can probably sign a contract in two weeks and we can fly within a year, including training the crew. Um, that's something that's really critical to have a commercial space station since you need a, a crew capability to go there. You know, the second other commercial option, which is Boeing Starliner, which is not yet operational, um, you know, if you look at what they are charging NASA and, and how quickly they move, you know, it's probably, it's a lot less commercial. It's maybe three to five years before you fly when you book it and probably more, more complex um, procurement process. So, you know, from, from the people, the crew transportation, I, I really think the opportunity would not be uh, anywhere near as, as realistic without Dragon existing and SpaceX. And then if you look at the launch of the module, you know, we also have a lower cost of launching module with Falcon 9 reusable uh, than anything um, that has been in the industry. And if that option wasn't there, you know, what would be the industry price? No one really knows. And then lastly, we have the hope of um, and the promise of Starship, which, you know, we are big believers, it's just a matter of time. And that will do two things to us. That will lower the cost of going to our space station on the crew side, and it will also allow us to launch much bigger modules uh, that are at a lower cost. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely believe that uh, SpaceX uh, by itself is probably, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure we would be doing this uh, without uh, the SpaceX success story and the foundation and the platform they are, they are creating for us. Mm -hmm. it's a, you know, the key to Haven 1 is number one, safety. Obviously, uh, any crew system has to be safe. Uh, number two was the timeline, you know, for it to occur with before NASA makes that selection in mid-2026. And so then the scope, we, we basically did what you call in software an MVP, not minimum viable product. So it's a, it's a station that launched on a rocket that exists today. We don't have to wait for Starship, Falcon 9 reusable, one that is relatively affordable or the most affordable in the world. Uh, also one that when we are ready to launch it, can launch. You know, it, it is right now launching at more than twice a week or something like that. Um, so that was a decision that was made. And then the other part is that it's actually a, a disposable space station. It will be there for three years. Uh, it will have four expedition, four crewed expedition each of 10 days, and then we will deorbit it uh, safely. And so this decision to keep it simple is why we can do it at this fee, this and many other things, our incredible engineering team, our facilities, and, and also the, a piece that we didn't talk about is what's unique about VAST is we are funded by our founder, uh, Jed McCaleb, uh, which is our currently our sole investor and is providing enough capital to make that first space station uh, building, launching, and the first crude mission a reality uh, before we need other investors. Well, the COD, you know, we, the, the program, as, as you mentioned, you know, yeah, we think it should be more attention, uh, more budget. Um, but also, we, we think that maybe it should be more phases, and NASA should select two companies to build a first module as quickly as they can, they can in 2028, and then look at the performance of these two companies and maybe pick one or both to double down and, and then go towards the capability of the ISS. Right now, this is more of a, uh, you know, no one has built a commercial space station yet, and the procurement is more, oh, we'll pick one or two that will do the full replacement. So our view is that there needs to be more step, and I think if there was an extra phase added, I think there's enough, we, we believe there's enough capital in the budget for for this reduced scope phase, and then the bigger phase, of course, will need uh, more, more budget. So. So if you look at the long-term goal of the company and why Jed, our founder, founded it and, and what we all believe in is that we want to create a world where more people are living in space than they're living on Earth. Um, and so contribute to obviously expand humanity in space. And right now if you are 
an astronaut that's a professional, you're fit, you exercise two hours a day for six months to a year on the ISS, you will come back as a, as a medical wreck. It will take you a long time to, uh, to adapt. So if you look at the you know, normal population and normal people, there's no way they can go to space for a long time, and, and we need that to happen. And, but to be clear, the, the artificial gravity, we want to be the company that makes this you know, electronic science fiction concept. We're just talking about spinning a space station, which is basic physics. So we want to be the company that makes that a reality, but we need stepping stones. So it will take us probably a decade or two, and our stepping stone is to focus first on microgravity, and on the opportunity of having NASA as our anchor customer for, for Haven 2. And, and for doing that, we're building Haven 1 first, and we believe we are the only one that will have hardware in space with a crew uh, before they make that uh, decision. So. Thank you, Christian, too, for having me.